All right, number three, suppose that the prices of women's athletic shoes have a mean of $75.15 and standard deviation of $17.89. What's the probability that the mean price of a random sample of 50 pairs of women's athletic shoes will differ from the population mean by less than $5? So again, since this is not an individual pair of shoes, this is a sample of 50 pairs, we need the altered z-score formula. Remember, our standard deviation is going to be smaller. So let's draw a picture of this. We know that our mean is, let's see, 75, 15. We want to know the probability that the price differs from the population mean by less than $5. So we can be $5 this way, which would be 80.15, and we can be $5 this way, so 70.15. So we want to know what's the probability that in our sample of 50 shoes, the average price falls in that region. Okay. If you're doing this one by hand, you're going to need two different z-scores. Um, so let's see. Let's start in on that. Um, z is x bar minus mu over sigma divided by root n. Um, I'm going to do the upper one first. So 80.15 minus 75.15 over our standard deviation was 17.89 over root 50. We have 50 pairs of shoes. And that z-score turns out to be 1.98. Okay. Um, I'm going to save you the work on it. When you do the other z-score using the 70.15, you end up with a negative 1.98. So it's a little shortcut there for us. Okay, so we need to find the area in between these. So we're going to find the area below 1.98, and then we'll subtract the area below negative 1.98. So if you're using the table, this is the method that you have to do. So you're finding the area from here down, and then you're subtracting from here down. And that will give you that part in the middle. So if we look on our table, um, at 1.98 we get 0 0.9761. And if we look at negative 1.98, we get 0 0.0239, I believe. Looks close. And we subtract those, 0.9522. Okay. We can also do this on the calculator um, without having to calculate z-scores. So it is easier, but I just want you to know how to do it by hand in case you're at home doing homework and you don't have a calculator on you. So in the distribution menu, you have normal, CDF. Our lower bound is 70.15. Our upper bound is 80.15, our mean is 75.15, and our standard deviation, remember this is the adjusted standard deviation, um, so 17.89 divided by root 50, because we got 50 shoes. And when we put that into the calculator, we get 0.9519, okay, so it is slightly different because we had some rounding area errors and the table's not completely, um, not as thorough, I guess. So what this means is if we take a, if we take a sample of 50 athletic shoes and we find the average price of that sample, um, we have a 95% chance that our average price is going to fall between $70, $15, and $80.15. All right, let's do one more of these. Um, a local manufacturing plant, the screws being manufactured have a mean length of 1.625 inches and a standard deviation of 0 0.01 inches. The quality control director randomly chooses a batch of 50 screws. What's the probability that the mean length differs from the mean of the population by more than allowed 0 0.004? I know this sounds like kind of a boring question, but uh, this is actually super practical because anything that is machined, any part that is machined, any food that's like cans are filled by machines or dum-dums that are made by machines, they're all going to have um, a little bit of variance in them. 
and quality control, they don't want that to be too much. You don't want it, your dum-dum sucker is supposed to be five grams. You don't want a dum-dum sucker that's 12 grams, and you don't want one that's one gram because then people would get angry. Um, so this is exactly what they do. They would randomly take 50 dum-dum suckers off the line, weigh them all, and see, okay, what's the average weight of these, and what's the probability that we would get that? Because um, that's going to tell them if their uh, machine needs to be adjusted, if it's time for a tune-up or something. So anyway, these are screws, because if you buy a screw that's a certain length, you want it to be that length. All right, I'm going to do this one straight on the calculator. Um, but I do want to emphasize that you should draw the pictures, even if you're just going straight to the calculator, because it's going to give you a good idea of what to plug into the calculator. So, drawing the picture, our screws are supposed to have a mean length of 1.625. And we choose a batch of 50 screws. Okay, so this is our sample. So it's, we have a normal distribution. Um, our Variance is smaller, standard deviation is smaller. We want to know what is the probability the mean length differs from the mean of the population by more than the allowed 0 0.004. Okay, so we can't be more than 0 0.004 above our mean or below it. So if you take 1.625 and add 0 0.004, you get 1.629. And if you subtract it, you get 1.621. And we want to know what's the probability that we're either too short or too long for these screws. Okay, so we want to find those two areas. Now, since this is symmetric, those two areas are going to be equal, so you only have to find one of them and then just double it. So on your calculator, you're going to do 2 times normal CDF. And it doesn't matter which one you do. Um, if you do the lower one, you're going to go from negative infinity to 1.621. The mean is 1.625. And the standard deviation, let's see, that was 0 0.01. And we have to divide by the number in our sample, which was 50. Okay, So we plug that all into our calculator. And let's see, what do we get? 0 0.047, that doesn't seem right, maybe 4.6. I'm going to plug into the calculator again, because I did this a while ago, and I don't know if I have the right answer. Normal CDF, negative infinity, to 1.621, 1.625, 1.1, 1.1. Double. Oh, it is 4.7 because when you round it, sorry about that, 0 0.0047. Okay, so um, that is your answer for that one. Now you can do that one um, by hand also. You would need to find the two different z-scores um, and then look them up on your table. Um, but just to show you, even if you're just going straight to the calculator, which I'm sure a lot of you are, and that's fine, um, just still draw the picture so that you have a good idea of what's happening with these. Now, as you're doing your homework tonight, make sure you're paying attention to whether it's an individual thing, like number 1A on our notes was, we were just looking at one person, um, or if you're looking at a sample mean, because um, that's when you need to use the adjusted uh, standard deviation.